Whether it's chasing Olympic glory or just keeping fit, the sport of rowing is popular with people of all ages. There's nothing quite like the feeling of a well-set rowing shell gliding through the water. But no matter how experienced you are, there's always the very real possibility that you'll end up out of the boat and in the water. It is inevitable that they will fall into the water at some stage, so we want to make them aware of what to do if that circumstance occurs, uh, so then they don't panic, and that they can either self-rescue or be assisted by other rowers, uh, and also to be assisted by their coaches with coaches' boats. Coxless boats present the added challenge of keeping a lookout while essentially facing the wrong way. And while the coaching mantra is keep your eyes in the boat, there's the very real need to avoid a possible collision. Well, they probably should be looking about every, say, 20 strokes. Uh, and one of the things that they should be doing is to look to the right on one occasion and the left on the other. If they continually look the same side, they'll end up with a blind spot behind them. Uh, the most common reason for a collision situation is that they might be going down the river and, and looked at where a pile is and considered that they've got plenty of room to go past it, but they've forgotten about the strong tidal flow and they end up with a ferrying effect which will take them straight towards the, the pile, which can end up in a collision. But when the inevitable does happen and you do end up in the water, it's important to be mentally prepared for firstly the shock of the cold and secondly for some simple procedures which are designed to have you back in the boat as quickly as possible. Of all the rowing shells, the single skull is definitely the easiest to fall out of. Most commonly, it's a crab that will get you, pulling on the oar when the blade isn't fully square, which can pull the boat down to one side, causing capsize. If a coach is nearby and able to assist, then that's the best possible outcome. However, if you are by yourself, it is possible to get back in the boat and row it to shore. In the single skull, basically the boat is probably upside down. Uh, in which case it needs to be turned over the right way up uh, and to do that they would need to tread on the rigger which is under the water so that then they can turn the boat over the right way up. When riding the boat it's important to watch out for one of the oars which might come over the top and hit you. And then having done that even though the boat is full of water uh, they can actually grab the handles, uh, put the two handles together and then in, a, in an action similar to how you get out of a swimming pool bob down in the water and then uh, raise themselves over the boat so they can lay their body over the boat and then they can cock a leg over and climb back in and stabilise the boat with the oars. So by following the step-by-step -step procedure you should be able to get back in the boat in no time. Firstly, turn the boat the right way up by treading on the rigger which is under the water. Watch the oar as you right the boat, it could hit you in the head as the boat rolls over. Once the boat is the right way up you can raise yourself out of the water and climb back in. When you're safely back in, use the oars to stabilise the boat and row back to safety. The challenging step is to get into the boat. Um, obviously a younger athlete who's agile and fit would, uh, would find it much easier than somebody who may, may be a mature age athlete. But again, you've got to consider the fact that you may be in cold water and the effects of cold water may also be having some impact. Being assisted by another sculler when trying to get back in your single skull is also helpful. In a single skull, equipment breakage such as a rigger or an oar is a major problem because it means you'll be left with only one oar and unable to row. Sometimes it can occur that there is an equipment breakage which might be a rigger or an oar, in which case in a single skull that's an obvious problem in that you only have one oar to row with. So it is possible to have another uh, sculler to come up beside you so that you raft up together uh, and then the pair of you can row with an individual oar each uh, to be able to get to shore. If you're in a single skull and experience a breakage but have no other rowers or coaches in the area to assist, the cardinal rule is always to stay with your boat because it will stay afloat a lot longer than you will. You need to stay with the boat so that then you can take advantage of its flotation. You can also lay over the top of the boat to get out of the water, uh, particularly if it's cold water. Double 
skulls are also easy to capsize, but because there are two of you, it's somewhat easier to climb back in. What you can do is you can have a, uh, one of the individuals on either side of the boat so that then they would stable or stabilise, I should say, the boat uh, to enable the other party to get in. And when they do get in, they would uh, go to the safety position, which is holding the, the handles of the blades together and stabilise the boat so the other person can get in. So, in a capsized double, use the riggers which are under the water to right the boat. Watch for flying oars as the boat rolls over, then use each other to stabilise the boat as each of you climbs in one at a time. Once one person is in the boat, they should put their oars in the safety position to stabilise the boat while the other rower climbs aboard. Once again, row to shore and warm up. For coaches, the most common form of vessel is the humble aluminium tinny. These little open boats usually come with a small outboard on the back and can be used to rescue rowers, but do come with some issues. And carrying just a few simple items on board can make climbing back into a tinny a whole lot easier. I think takeaway advice is to, to if you get the chance to practice it in, in, in good conditions, uh, and you've got someone standing by to help, is to actually get yourself into the water and someone else into the boat and actually try and, and get on board and see what works and what doesn't. That's, that's the best advice. And uh, yeah, and, and have the gear that you need. Uh, a, a small portable boarding ladder uh, over the transom may, may work beautifully. It might just be, if you haven't got that, a piece of decent diameter braided rope, tie a bowline and, and secure that to the thwart, put that over the side to use as a foot loop so someone can get some purchase to get on board. Just little things like that can help. And even for capsizers, having a rope pre-rigged with a float on it so that in the event the dinghy capsizes that the guys in the dinghy can then uh, throw it over the, over the upturned hull, put their feet on the opposite gunnel and actually pull to roll the boat up uh, and then having a bucket to do some bailing. Just a little thing, of course wearing a life jacket.